African Union High Level Panel on Emerging Technologies, APET, is an initiative dedicated to driving Africa's socioeconomic transformation through cutting edge innovation. At the heart of this initiative are the continent's brightest minds working to identify and prioritize the technologies that are poised to enable the African continent realize sustainable development. On the sidelines of the APET statutory meeting, co-hosted by the African Institute for Development Policy, AFIDE, and the African Union for Development Agency, Auda Nepad, in Lilongwe, Malawi, on September 2nd to 3rd, 2024, Professor Abubakar Sambo, Professor Emeritus at Osmanu Danfordio University, and a member of APET, provided an insightful overview on how the panel works and the value of the collaboration between AFIDEP and Auda Nepad in supporting the continent's efforts to leverage emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, drones, and the Internet of Medical Things to strengthen Africa's health sector. What is the importance of having a group such as APET in the AU structure? The importance of uh, APET is very significant to African countries. This is because our leaders, our presidents, thought that Af it's time for Africa to use the outputs of research and development in scientific area to move the African continent significantly forward in all major areas of human endeavor, right from human health, to agriculture, electricity supply, water supply, and so on and so forth. What is your area of expertise and how do you engage in the panel to set priorities for the emerging technologies on the continent? My area of expertise is on energy and environment. And in that wise, I was very much uh, excited to note that APET had selected two technologies, microgrids and next generation batteries. As you may be aware, African continent is very backwards in terms of electricity access. It is the most energy poverty continent of the world. While the world is about having about 90% electricity access, that of Africa is about 87, 80, is about 46, 43%. That's about half of the world average. Of course, I will quickly tell you, there are a few countries of Africa that are doing very well in that area, and that is North Africa, Southern Africa, then a few other countries, like Kenya and Ghana, their access is uh, above 90%. But the rest of Africa, including my own country, is very poor. Nigeria's electricity access is just about 63%, which means for our 230 million people, we have a lot of work to do. Now, the areas that uh, hit this electricity deficit that I'm talking about, as I mentioned, is the microgrids and the next generation batteries. This is because the United Nations, right from the Sustainable Development Goals year of 2015, decided that uh, the world should tilt towards renewable energy and energy efficiency in order to mitigate the effects of excessive carbon emissions arising from the use of fossil fuels. And uh, most of the African countries, nearly all of them, uh, signed and after a little while ratified the Sustainable Development Goals. And one of them in particular, SDG number seven, is for all countries of the world to ensure universal access to modern energy services by 2030. And many African countries are struggling hard to see that they move towards that by 2030. Now, the interesting thing is that two years before the United Nations decision of 2015, that is 2013, our leaders under the ages of African Union adopted Agenda 2063, as you might have had during this meeting. One of the major components of that 2063 decision is that uh, climate change is also an African problem. And that wise, our presidents mandated all African states to bring in their own nationally determined contributions to 
anticipating climate change. And one of the major things that will enable that to be done is again, patronizing renewable energy for electricity supply and using electric vehicles in the transport sector. Now, use of electrical electricity from renewable, there's a hindrance there. This is because most of the national supplies are through what is called national grids. National grids are, for African countries are very weak and fragile. And the way out is to use off-grid supplies and the mini grids. Mini grids provide beautiful options. And that is why that tool of APET comes in handy if we can use the mini grids developed, adopted by APET, uh, APET in a very uh, widespread manner. We are going to change the narrative in terms of electricity access of Africa. But then the problem, second problem associated with renewables is that they are intermittent. You have solar in the daytime, not in the night. Then when the wind is strong is when you have electricity from wind. And when the water flows after the rains is when you have hydropower. So the thing to do is to store the energy in batteries when there's a lot of sunshine, when there's a lot of wind, and so on. And that is where the next generation batteries come handy. So these two tools, if we can use them significantly in a very widespread manner, we will begin to lift Africa as far as electricity access is concerned. And that's why I'm excited uh, with what APET has done in that regard. What is the value of this meeting convened by AFIDEP and Auda Nepad? in pushing forward the work of the panel. As you may be aware, you know, APET has statutory meetings, two, three meetings per annum. And in recent times, because of difficulties of funding, uh, Aouda Nepat, that is where APET resides, has been having difficulties of getting funds from the Mother African Union. And when APET looked around, it realized that Af uh, Af AFIDEP is an excellent partner because it was working on policies for development and we are also working policies for development. And that's how we came together. It would appear that AFIDEP has a little bit more resources than Ahuda Nepad in terms of policy making. And that's why uh, the marriage between the two bodies is uh, for the benefits of all.